biology. So from the stomach, uh, the food will now enter into the small intestine via the pyloric sphincter. So the food will enter into the first part of the small intestine, which is referred to as the duodenum. So the first part is called the duodenum, as the second part of the small intestine is called the ileum. So the chyme uh, gradually is released into the duodenum on a period of about three to four hours, whereby this enables the duodenum to work on a particular amount of food at a time, whereby in the duodenum we see that we have uh, different accessory glands, whereby we have the pancreas, we have the gallbladder, and then finally we have the liver or the spleen. So as we had said earlier, duodenum is the first part of the small intestine, which is basically about 25 centimeters long. So the arrival of acidic chyme stimulates the secretion of hormones secreting from the pancreas and cholestokinin from the duodenal walls. So what is the function of the secreting? So this is the function of the secreting. So secreting basically stimulates the pancreas to secrete pancreatic juice. It also inhibits the secretion of gastric juice uh, from the stomach. This, uh, this will be like a key to, to tell the stomach walls or the gastric glands that food is now entering the duodenum and no longer in the stomach, so you should stop secreting gastric juice. So, What's the function of cholestokinin? So this cholestokinin basically stimulates the gallbladder to secrete bile juice, whereby we see that the bile juice is produced by the liver and then it is stored in the gallbladder. So what you should know is that the pancreatic juice is basically alkaline due to sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is also found in the pancreatic juice as well as the mouth regions. So this is to enable the enzymes in the duodenum to work effectively whereby we saw in the mouth we had sodium hydrogen carbonate and amylase. Also in the pancreas we have sodium hydrogen carbonate and amylase. So the neutral uh, pH is really important here. So let's look at the pancreas. So the pancreas is an organ which secretes digestive enzyme, uh, exocrine, and the hormones, uh, endocrine, whereby these ones we are going to discuss more on the later topics. So, Let's look at the constituents of the pancreatic juice, whereby, uh, first of all, we have amylase, whereby this amylase also digests starch to maltose, just as we saw in the mouth. We have also pancreatic lipase, whereby li uh, this lipase, it's, it's, it converts lipids to fatty acids and glycerol. Then again, we have pancreatic trypsin, whereby this converts protein to peptides, and then we have chemotrypsin, which uh, it also converts proteins to peptides. So let's look at the liver as the other accessory organ in the duodenum. So liver basically produces bile juice. The function of bile juice is to emulsify fats or break down fats into very tiny oil droplets that can be absorbed by the body. So bile is a bitter greenish yellow alkaline fluid whereby if we have ever slaughtered a chicken, we saw that uh, there was a very greenish fluid, greenish dark fluid. That liquid is mainly bile juice, which is bitter greenish yellow, and it will make the whole meal to be bitter, so if you are not careful. So the bile juice is stored in the gallbladder, and it is only discharged into the duodenum where it acts on the process of emulsification. So, the bile, the bile juice contains salts like uh, sodium glycocholate, uh, whereby the chemical symbol of sodium glycocholate is C26H42NNAO6. Uh, then apart from that, we have sodium taurocholate, whereby the chemical symbol of sodium taurocholate is C26H44. Uh, and then we have H, we have N, we have NAO, 7S, so that is sodium taurocholate. So the salts help in emulsifying the fats that we saw uh, earlier, whereby we saw on emulsification. So these two salts mainly play a role in emulsification of the fats and their constituents of the bile juice. So uh, let's look at digestion in the ileum. So whereby we saw that this is the second portion of the small intestine. So the first portion is duodenum, the second one is the, uh, is the ileum. So the ileum has two functions, whereby we have chemical digestion and then we have absorption. 
So the chemical digestion, uh, this is where the chemical digestion mainly is completed. So the chemical digestion started in the mouth and it's basically completed in the small intestine. So the enzymes responsible uh, for chemical digestion here in the ileum, we have the intestinal juice or the sacus entericus. So the intestinal juice or sacus entericus is secreted from the glands in the walls of the cribes of Leibacun. So the cribes of Leibacun are the ones responsible for secreting the intestinal juice containing different types of enzymes. So there are also the branous glands secreting a mucus rich alkaline fluid. So you remember in the stomach we said that we had the goblet cell secreting mucus, while now in the small intestine we have the branous glands that secrete uh, the mucus as well. So the secretions are stimulated by the arrival of the chyme in the small intestine. So the intestinal juice basically contains five main enzymes whereby we are going to look at them. So the first one is lipase whereby this breaks down lipids to fatty acids and glycerol. So we also have maltase, which breaks down mal maltose to glucose. We have sucrase or invertase, which mainly breaks down sucrose into glucose and uh, fructose. So we also have a peptidase, which mainly breaks down peptides to amino acids. And then we have lactase, which breaks down lactose to galactose and glucose. So the walls of the ileum have goblet cells, again, which also secretes uh, mucus, whereby we saw as the other parts, we saw that mucus uh, lubricates food, and it also forms a protective uh, shield against self-digestion of the stomach walls and also of the ileum. So the resulting uh, expulsion whereby the digestive enzymes has been incorporated together with the food in the small intestine. So the resulting emulsion is called chyle, containing the digestive products. So in the stomach, remember we said we, ha we, have, we had chyme, whereby this was the food in, in, in cooperation with the digestive enzymes. Now in the small, or in the ileum rather, we have now chyle, which is food in, in cooperation with the sacus entericus or the intestinal juice. So after the chemical digestion, we now have absorption, whereby in absorption, we have glu glucose, fructose, galactose, and amino acids are absorbed by diffusion and active transport to the blood capillaries. So the capillaries mainly merge forming hepatic portal vein, transporting the nutrients to the liver. So after absorption, the nutrients, first of all, are transported to the liver, whereby we see that fatty acids and glycerol are absorbed to the epithelial cells of the lactils. So the lactils merge into leaf, lymph vessels that transport uh, lipids to the body. So the oil gives the lactil a milky appearance, hence the name, uh, their name lactils. So the substances like water, alcohol, soluble vitamins, uh, vitamin, let's say maybe vitamin C and vitamin B, are uh, maybe and some medicines like maybe for example if you take a painkiller are mainly absorbed into the stomach and the duodenal walls. So substances which are not absorbed are passed to the large intestine or the colon. So let's look at the adaptations of the ileum to the function. You see that the ileum is long providing a large surface area for the absorption and the digestion of materials. It is also narrow, uh, bringing digested food close to the walls fa and faster digestion and absorption of the materials. And then we see that it is highly coiled to slow down food uh, movement to allow for more time of digestion. And then we see that it has a very thin epithelium for faster absorption of materials. And then it has dense network of blood capillaries for absorption and transport of the absorbed food. Also, we see that it has lactils for the absorption of fatty acids and glycerol. You remember we mentioned lactils. And then it has numerous villi and microvilli for the absorption of different materials. So let's meet on the next class as we proceed now to the last part of digestion, whereby we'll see on the large intestine or the colon. Biology.